In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Well, a really warm welcome to this service from St. Peter's Church here in West Blatchington in Hove. And a really warm welcome to you, especially if you're new to St. Peter's. Uh, from wherever you're uh, watching or listening to this, we know we have people um, in the area who watch this, people slightly further afield. So if you're a bit further afield, maybe you're up in Scotland or you're down in Cornwall, hello to you. And people around the world as well. So whether you're watching from Australia or from India, a really warm welcome to you. And it's wonderful that you've chosen to worship with us today. We're going to begin our time with a prayer of preparation, a prayer that we say uh, pretty much every Sunday here at St. Peter's, but it's good because if you're anything like me, then chances are when you sit down to watch this or to worship, sometimes there can be all sorts of things going on in your head. So it's great that we can pray and ask God to help us to focus on what he wants us to focus on today. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, here today is also Father's Day. Now, people have different sort of views on, on Father's Day. Perhaps you're a father and you're watching this, in which case, hello, happy Father's Day. Um, but it can bring up all sorts of memories for us as well. But perhaps it's an opportunity for us to think about fathers in the Bible. I wonder how many fathers you can name. Um, well, let's think of a few, shall we? Well, we've got fathers like Adam, he was a father. People like Noah, he was a father. Or Abraham, he was a father at a great age, wasn't he? Or Isaac and Jacob or King David, all sorts of fathers. And there are people who took on roles like fathers. Think of Mary's husband, Joseph, as well, who was Jesus's earthly father. All sorts of fathers in the Bible. But there's one father in particular who stands out, and I'm sure you can guess who that is. That is our Father God. And it's one of the huge privileges of being a Christian that we can call God our Father. Do you know what? Sometimes people find it hard calling God Father. Perhaps they didn't know their father in this life, or perhaps their relationship with their father wasn't very good at all, or perhaps they've lost their father recently, maybe even due to the coronavirus. It can be a hard day as well. But there is one God, one Father, who will not give up on us. He will not let us down, and that is our Heavenly Father. So today, maybe we want to spend some time just thinking about that and giving thanks that we can call on God as our perfect Father who knows us inside and out and who loves us, his children. And maybe it's, you might even want to make a Father's Day card for God. Uh, and maybe decorate that and to display that in your house to remember today on this Father's Day that God is our loving Father. And Jesus encourages us, doesn't he, to call on God, Abba, Father. So I encourage you to call on him today. But sometimes we don't treat God as our Father. Sometimes we'd rather stick to ourselves and live life our own way. And that's why we've got an opportunity in our service now to confess our sins to God, whatever they are, whether they're sins recent or long time ago, knowing that God our Father has provided a way back to him through the death of of Jesus, his Son, our Saviour. So we say these words together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. So may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We now say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for the third Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the Spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great gale arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, 
Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the gospel of the Lord. When peace like a river attendeth my soul, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. So starts the beginning of Horatio Spafford's famous hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. The hymn was written in part as a response to the heartbreaking events of his four daughters drowning on a cross-Atlantic ship in 1873. But despite the grief and pain, Spafford was still able to write that it is well. There is peace and hope because Jesus was with him. Move forward to today and we still face storms, don't we? They may be literal storms, such as those that people face when they go out from Shoreham Harbour here at the boats. Or they might be storms of different kinds, storms of disappointment, storms of failure, storms of grief or storms of persecution. But what does it look like to face the storm with Jesus? That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. The first thing we see is that Christians, followers of Jesus, are not exempt from storms. As today's Gospel reading begins, and as the sun sets on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus invites his followers to get into the boat and head out across the sea to the other side. Now, as some of Jesus' followers were fishermen, they would be all too familiar with the fact that because of the geography of the area, with the sharp hills sloping down to the sea, rough storms are not that uncommon. It is a dangerous place. But the sea represents something else to the disciples. It's a place of chaos, a place of danger and uncertainty. You can't see what's below the waterline. And it holds mystery and peril and even death. And at some point later, that danger rears its ugly head. The storm comes, the wind howls, the waves beat against the little flotilla of boats and water comes pouring in. The disciples had chosen to follow Jesus and that meant going through experiences that they wouldn't have otherwise have faced. Sometimes as we follow Jesus, he does lead us through storms. Storms that perhaps we wouldn't have faced if we decided not to follow him. But what's important is what lies beyond the storm and also what we learn and experience while we're going through it. That means for us, don't be surprised by storms or of the trial you face as a Christian whether that's at work, online, or even at home. But back to the boat, and we imagine the total panic. The disciples are furiously bailing out the cold water. Everything is chaos, except for Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, "'Teacher, don't you care if we drown?' The next thing we see is that Jesus demonstrates what faith looks like when we're in the storm. Jesus is not safely on the shore, having sent his disciples on alone. He is there with them. But on first appearances, it doesn't look like he's all that bothered. But the fact that he's there means that Jesus knows our trials as his own. Now, we see earlier in Mark's Gospel that 
Jesus had been busy before this event, and perhaps we might marvel at the fact that the one who in the beginning created the waters that cover the whole earth was in fact asleep in a little Jewish fishing boat out on the sea because he was tired from the day's events. But the disciples don't leave him sleeping. After all, they believe that at any moment they could all drown. So they ask the question that perhaps we found ourselves asking when we're in the middle of a storm. Jesus, don't you care if we drown? And in fact, that cry of desperation is a common motif for God's children when they're in storms. In Psalm 22, which Jesus himself quotes while dying on the cross, says this, O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Basically, God, don't you care? But Jesus is showing us what faith looks like in the storm. The fact that he can be asleep in the boat, yes, shows that he's tired, but most importantly shows that he believes that my father's got this. It is a sleep of peace and rest, not abandonment. But the same won't be said when the disciples sleep, when Jesus wants their support. In the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus is crying out to God in prayer, crying out to his Father, the disciples will sleep, not because of trust, but because of weakness. So how can we know not only that Jesus cares, but that he can do something in the storm? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. Jesus' power rivals the storm. He stood up and just with two simple words, the storm stopped completely, suddenly. The word in the original where Jesus says be still also means to be muzzled, like with a violent dog. The muzzle goes on and it's now safe. It's under control. But Jesus does this with just a word. In the original Greek, there's actually some wordplay going on. The furious squall earlier literally means a mega wind. And when Jesus stops it, it literally becomes a mega calm. A mega wind to a mega calm. Jesus' powerful word versus the most intense forces of nature, which means nothing is impossible with Jesus. Now, we may be so familiar with this story that we miss the wow, but we should be in awe of what Jesus can do here. If he can calm mega wind with a simple command, I think he deserves our attention. Think about it this way. Imagine you are on a cruise ship in the Bay of Biscay and suddenly a hurricane hits. The ship is leaning from side to side. There's tables flying, people sliding backwards and forwards inside. And all of a sudden, a rather unimpressive looking Middle Eastern man stands up and says, stop. And suddenly, everything goes dead calm, like a mill pond. Now, you probably wouldn't just get on with the rest of your day as if nothing had happened. This is life-changing stuff. But I wonder when we read this, do we give Jesus that same credit? Now, the truth is, none of us do, or to the extent that we should. So what will Jesus make of us? He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Lastly then, we see that Jesus is patient with us when we struggle. Psalm 103 verse 13 says, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Jesus doesn't berate or bully the disciples for their lack of trust but gently challenges them. Their terror 
should have passed by now. The storm has stopped and fear should have been replaced with faith, but they're not quite there. They're not at this stage yet. But you see, Jesus will go on to face another storm. But this one won't be on the sea, but up on Calvary's hill. The storm will be the storm of God's judgment, not falling on failing disciples like Peter and John and you and me, but the storm of God's judgment falling on the one who will sacrifice his life for us. He will face the greater storm so we don't have to. And because of that, when we face storms in our life, we can know with certainty that he cares and that he won't give up on us. The one who faced the storm is the one who will be with us in our storms if we let him. So we should and we can trust this Jesus. Whatever storm you're going through. Because he is the man who calmed the sea. See the stricken boat as it is tossed upon the sea. Hear the fearful cries that wake the man from Galilee. He stands before the raging, speaks peace and harmony. Winds and waves obey. He is the man who comes the sea. Trust me in the storm, for I'm the man who comes.
If you're able to, we now stand to say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in every age you have raised up holy men and women to reflect the light of Christ and to teach us the way of holiness. We thank you for those who have been teachers in the school of Christ. Give understanding to those who study the faith that the church has handed on and clarity to those who communicate the gospel in a changing world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those who have been shepherds of your people. Give a pastoral heart to deacons, priests and bishops and the needful gifts to all your people in their ministry. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those who have been Christian rulers in the world and for those who carry the good news to lands where it had not been before. Give wisdom to all who have power and influence among the nations and establish God's sovereignty among people of every race. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those whom you have called to live in community. Establish mutual love among those drawn into fellowship in your service and bless with Christ's presence all the communities to which we relate. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those who have lived out their vocation in family life. Give your grace to all those who nurture children and all who care for the aged and enfold in your love all your sons and daughters. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those who you have brought wholeness through the medicine of the gospel. Give skill to all who minister healing and reconciliation in your name and comfort all who cry out to you from any sort of distress. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for the noble army of martyrs by the shedding of whose blood the church has been enriched. Keep under your protection those who are persecuted for the cause of Christ and acknowledge, we pray, those who have passed through death trusting your promises. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those whose anniversaries of their death happen this week. And as we celebrate their memory and rejoice in their friendship, we ask you to bless their friends and family. Bring into one communion and fellowship all those for whom Christ died. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Hasten, Lord, the day when people will come from east and west, from north and south, and sit at table in your kingdom, and we shall see your Son in his glory. Amen. Let us say together the prayer that our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, thank you very much. 
for joining us here at St. Peter's West Blatchington. Just to let you know that next Sunday, the 27th, is a very special Sunday. It's the Sunday that we are going to be welcoming our new curate and his family. Uh, Jan and his wife Jenny and Adam and Hannah will be here and we really look forward to welcoming them and please do remember uh, Jan in your prayers next Saturday the 26th he'll be ordained by Bishop Martin at Chichester Cathedral and because of the um, lockdown it means that only a few of us can be there for that service but you can watch online if you go to chichestercathedral.org UK, I think it is, or just Google Chichester Cathedral, uh, and you can watch the live service that will be happening next Saturday afternoon uh, at about two o'clock. But if you go on the website before then, it will tell you the exact time when they start live streaming the service, and we'll be properly welcoming Jan and his family here at St Peter's next Sunday, which will be really exciting. It's also going to be exciting because we're hoping that that will be the first of our Sunday school back here as well. Uh, we've been doing some work behind the scenes trying to get that all ready. Now, if you would like your child to attend Sunday school, um, can you please get in contact with us here at St. Peter's um, because there will be a cap on how many children we can have and we don't want to disappoint people. So if you can email me at rector.westblatchington at gmail.com uh, and let us know that you want your child to attend next Sunday. Uh, and for the following Sundays, but for next Sunday is going to be the first one back. Um, can you please do that so that we've got an idea of um, how many children we need to cater for and so we can get it all sorted and everything like that. And what will happen is during the service your child will be collected, taken through to the community centre uh, where they'll have their Sunday school there and then brought back so the adults would remain in the church for the rest of the service and the children go out and then they're brought back again for communion. So if you want to register your child for Sunday school, do get in contact with us here at St. Peter's. And also to say, again, our next upcoming event is going to be Saturday the 3rd of July and the Summer Fair. And we're looking forward to that. And we're going to have as much of it outside as possible. So here in the uh, UK, obviously, the lockdown is being extended from the 21st of June up to the 19th of July now. Uh, so that will have some impact on how we do the Summer Fair but we're still going to be keeping things like social distancing, have as much the outside and be using hand sanitizers as well as much as possible. So I do look forward to seeing you there starting at 11.30 a.m. the Summer Fair, Saturday the 3rd of July. Well, let's now finish with a prayer of blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us now and forevermore. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.